Greetings everyone, I'm M and we're Peaches, and it is time for Slay the Princess! I'm so excited. I have one last go around, and I know what I, know what I want to do. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. I have a question if for you the narrator. Don't, it will be the end of the world. Can't someone else do this? Unfortunately, you're the only one who can pull this off. <clears throat> I don't make the rules. I wish I did, but I don't. See, that's what's interesting to me. Who makes the rules? Why am only I able to you do You make this? your way up the short <clears throat> path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will. See, in a previous run. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely. I went down without the knife. I talked to the princess for, the while, for a while, and then I went back upstairs, and she flipped out. So this time, I'm gonna actually communicate with her that I'm going to get her out. Not going to amputation this time. The door to the basement. So I can either say I'm here to save you, or I can lie and say I'm here to save you. How many times do I have to tell you how dangerous letting her out of here would be before it finally sinks in? Wait, really? You're here to rescue me? I, I was starting to think I'd be stuck down here forever. Come downstairs. I want to see the face of my rescuer. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. There's still a spare chain there. Gotta be careful of that one. <laughs> She's beautiful. How could someone like this be a threat to anyone? Oops. Hi, I can't believe you're here. I've been waiting for something like this to happen forever. A bit of a glitch there, it didn't play the voice line. I hope you brought something to deal with these chains. Don't do it. If she gets out of those chains, we're all one step closer to the end. I'll see what I can do. You're only making this more difficult. Thank you. Thank you. You're making a huge mistake. No, you're doing the right thing. You walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. They're large and heavy, far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. I'm guessing you don't have the key? Maybe it's somewhere upstairs. Doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of day. They wouldn't have just left the key to her chains somewhere in the cabin. And if there isn't a key, do you have any other ideas? Maybe there's some way to break the chains? Okay. Or if that doesn't work, I guess we can always cut me out of them. She offers the suggestion with almost complete nonchalance. If we were stuck down here long enough, I'm sure we'd be nonchalant about cutting our way out if it meant we could finally be free. You attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door at the top of the stairs mm. slams shut. You hear the click of a lock sliding into place. Is someone else here? <coughs> You try the door, but it's locked from the outside. Your shouts and pleas are met with silence. You're here to slay the princess, and you won't leave until the task is done. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. This would have been so much easier if you'd just taken the blade like you were supposed to. Easier for whom? Easier for everyone. Look at the mess you're in. How do I... how do I spin this? I heard the door slam. They locked you down here too, didn't they? 
there's a slight panic rising in the princess's voice. If I could just get out of these chains, I know we could force our way out of here together. She barely God hesitates damn. before raising her arm to her mouth, her teeth tearing through her limb with the determination of a trapped wolf. As she rips her flesh from her bone, so the that's how she comes did from it. behind you, the clang of bouncing metal. It's the blade from upstairs. You're not sure how it made its way down here, but if there's a time to strike, it's now. Or we could use it to free her. You won't like what happens if you do that. <sighs> Fine. I actually don't have another choice. I've locked myself in. That's what I was going to do anyway. Against your better judgment, you place the blade against the ragged, self-inflicted wound on the princess's arm, just above the unyielding chain binding her to this place. You cut into her flesh. The blade is sharp, and it takes little effort to crack through the bone of her arm. That's ridiculous. Her limb falls to the ground, and the heavy chains follow suit. She didn't so much as utter a sound through the whole ordeal. No, she didn't. She smiles softly as her gaze meets yours, blood from her wounded arm dripping rhythmically to the ground. How is she still smiling after everything? It's like she isn't even bothered by what just happened. Thank you. Now let's get out of here. No, we won't have any of that. The stakes are too high. Oh, she's just going to force me again. Because I, like, I have no. the knife. I can't just let her escape into the world. As the princess approaches the bottom stair, your body steps forward. It's not going to let me do the same thing again. Wait, this isn't fair. You can't just do that. Watch me. What are you doing? Stop that. Something's come over you, hasn't it? Y you know you don't have to do this, right? Your body lunges forward, the blade held low, ready to sink into her heart. But the princess dodges, stumbling back against the wall before the blade has a chance to connect. Stop it! Stop trying to resist me! I'm trying to get you out of here alive! How oh, I can resist again? The blade! Move the blade! As your body remains frozen in stubborn resistance, the princess takes a cautious step forward. We both know this isn't you. She nervously reaches towards you and takes the blade from your infuriatingly rigid hands. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll try to be quick. Oh, damn. She plunges it into your chest, tearing through flesh and sinew. It is agony. But you aren't dead yet. Why couldn't you slit my throat like you did before? That was that oh was no. way easier. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it'll take a second. Stay strong. We can tough it out until it's done. For her sake. For her sake? Don't you start pretending that dying a painful death is some sort of heroic gesture. The two of you have literally doomed everyone. Whatever. She sinks <laughs> the blade into your chest again and again and again, and you That's feel for her, every actually. inch of burning pain that slices its way into your body. Well, I shouldn't, right? Because I feel like I'd be in shock at this point, but okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry! Oh no, I feel so bad for she her. She doesn't know how to use a knife, does she? Apparently not. Though it doesn't matter how sloppy her knife work is, does it? A stab wound is still a stab wound, and it won't be long before you bleed out. I'm so sorry! With one last thrust of the knife, your legs give out beneath you. You collapse to the floor, your blood pooling around you, your limbs unresponsive. The princess stares down at your ruined chest, as tears carve rivulets of pink down her blood-spattered cheeks. It can't just end like this, right? What am I gonna get? Oh, that's rich coming from you. As much as I prefer for things to have gone differently, I can't deny the reality of what's happened. The two of you made your choice. It's over. 
everything goes dark and you die. The damsel, fascinating. You're on a path in the woods and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Now, I haven't really talked about this much, but I really like the soundtrack. warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. If only you knew what you did to us, you- Oh, I got the smitten! <laughs> Excuse me? I like that double meaning there, smitten. Forget he said anything. <laughs> but he is a villain. He made our beloved brutally take our life last time. He's trying to keep us apart, but he won't be able to withstand the power of our love. Last time? What are you talking about? I think he just likes to hear the sound of his own voice. <laughs> Let's try to ignore him. I do, but I also speak <laughs> from the heart. My passions are too great to be stifled. They must be expressed. Sure, yeah, your passions are strong and all, but not everyone needs to hear them. Some things are better kept quiet. Don't pay their bickering any mind. Focus on the task ahead. This is great. The interior of the cabin is clean and elegant, its stone walls draped in fine threaded tapestries, a prison befitting a royal prisoner. The only furniture of note is an ornate wooden table with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. What are you talking about? This isn't a wall. It's a mirror. Or at least it'll be a mirror once we wipe off that layer of grime. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. But there was a mirror a second ago. And now it's gone. Pity. We could have a feather out oh, of place, and now we'll never know. We can't gallantly sweep her off her feet if we have a feather out of place. I forgot there's like a ribbon behind the mirror. Or whatever that's called, like a banner. Should I take the blade? I'm gonna enter the basement. I'm gonna end up with the blade in one way or another. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing an intricate stairwell. Gold-trimmed carpet glimmers in the light of the torches positioned along the walls. The basement almost seems welcoming in the dim firelight. But it's still a stone basement. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. A soft voice carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? Her voice. It's somehow even more beautiful than last time. I think we're in love. Okay, I'm with you that we should be doing whatever we can to save her, but saying we're in love is a bit much, don't you think? We don't even know the princess. We can still do right by her without all this fawning. <laughs> yes, for everyone's sake, you're not in love. Just remember that her charms are all part of the manipulation. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. A There's wrist. a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall. My love, we're here to rescue you from your unjust and foul imprisonment. You know she can't hear you, right? She may not be able to hear my words, but surely she can hear my spirit. 
She can't. Oh, your spirit's plenty loud, all right. It's you, my dashing hero. I was so worried you wouldn't come back. Did you hear that? She said we're dashing. And she called us a hero. Flattery really goes a long way with the two of you, doesn't it? Waiting for you to come back. You've been here before, haven't you? That's right, villain. And you killed us. Well, she killed us. Only because he made us try and kill her. It was self-defense. Our beloved's hands remain unstained by cruelty. I mean, he's kind of right. <laughs> and you've died before. So an entire world has been damned to oblivion. I'd really hoped I'd be the first, but what's done is done. What matters is you have a chance to do it right this time. The multiverse is littered with the corpses of your failures. We damned a whole world. But everything reset. Nothing resets. You're just somewhere else. You can't keep hopping between worlds forever. Especially not without leaving a trail of incomprehensible devastation behind you. <sighs> this is horrible. Horrible for you, maybe. But we've been given another opportunity to sweep her off her feet and treat her like the lady she is. Now, hold on. If she actually ended a world, are you sure we want to do this? Are you sure we want to rescue her? We never saw a world end. And now I'm even more certain that we must chase our heroic and romantic destiny than I've ever been. I shan't let anyone convince us otherwise. Okay, I am starting to understand a little more about how this works now. So every time you die, you just respawn in a different world. Now, strictly speaking, I don't think the princess herself is actually responsible for the world ending. She just... It, it ends when she escapes the, the, the cabin, but she's not actually doing the thing. It's this other entity that that this story is actually about. Are you listening She's to just him? a vessel. He's lost it. Don't let him distract you. Just do your job. But here's the thing. She didn't get taken by the Entity last time. She hasn't been taken yet. What happened after I died? You died, and now we're talking. I'm sorry about what happened last time. The narrator who sent me here to kill you took over my body. It was extremely unfair. If another version of me was pushed to such drastic action, it was for good reason. That's okay. You were just doing your best, and that's all that matters. She took that in stride. To a surprising extent. An almost unsettling extent, actually. That's because she's perfect. Do you think she has someone like him telling her what to do? She doesn't. There's no one else like me. I think he's right, because I like it better if she doesn't have some horrid little voice like him, always trying to drive her to violence. Is our narrator like her weird eldritch monstrosity? Well, then again, no, he just said there's no one like him. What is he? I don't know. Was I supposed to have ended the world? Would that have made you happy? Uh, Isn't that just like our darling princess? She wants to make us happy. My heart melts further with every word that passes through her beautiful lips. I'm not overly fond of that. Are you listening to her? That's a confession! Is it? No, I don't want the world to end. Then I didn't end the world. I don't like See? That. She didn't confess anything. She is innocence itself. I'm not so sure. <laughs> Thank you.
I didn't bring a knife. Do I have to cut you out again? I'm okay with whatever you come up with. You can cut my arm off again. We won't be laying a finger on her perfect wrists. And indeed, we won't even have to. Do you see how dainty her hands are? We'll be able to slip her right out with no harm done. Okay. What? No, she's a prisoner here. You can't just slip her hand through the chains. Why are you two arguing over the logistics of slipping her hand out of her shackles? She just said she'd be okay with any idea we came up with. Am I the only one here who thinks that's weird? Right. She didn't care last time. Why should she care this time? That's our stoic, smiling angel. No, you're right. It's extremely bizarre behavior and further evidence that she's a monster who's not to be trusted. So go ahead and slay her. It's more like she's an empty shell. She's a vessel. She's not a whole person, is she? No. I can't let you do that. If you take another step towards the princess, I'll... You'll what? Take over our body and force us to try and kill her? I would if you had a weapon. <laughs> Not on my watch, villain. My passions contain titanic depths, and if you try anything that might harm our dearest, I will end our life without a second thought. Okay. You wouldn't. He would. I would. I'd listen to him if I were you. He has a lot of strong feelings. <laughs> and doesn't the world end if we don't stop her? You approach the princess and gingerly slide her hand from her bindings. That shouldn't have worked. I'll be damned. We're doomed. <laughs> I can't believe it. But I guess I have to. <laughs> I told you, there's no life more worth living than that of a true believer. I'm free, and you're not trying to kill me this time. Thank you. Thank you so much. The princess jumps up and smothers you in a joyful embrace. Ugh. <laughs> if only you had a weapon, one slip of the wrist and your pristine blade would be buried in her back and everyone out there would be saved. Luckily for Mr. Romance, we don't have a weapon. Who needs a weapon when we have the power of love on our side? <laughs> what do we do now? What do you want to do? Let me guess. End the world? If she says whatever you want to do, I'm going to lose my shit. Spoken with the rank cynicism of someone who has never felt love in his heart. I don't actually know. Nobody's ever asked me what I wanted before. Okay, I'll... I'll, I'll that, that's understandable. She doesn't even know what she wants. You may have had her all wrong. What if this whole thing is just a misunderstanding? What if she doesn't want to end the world? You're so gullible. Is the only thing you've ever doubted the actual truth? I think I want to leave. And I think... The princess closes her eyes in deep reflection. And then she shrugs. I don't know. What do you want to do? Oh my god. Okay, you know what? That's actually reasonable because at least she thought it. Because at least she thought about what she wanted to do. It, it, it's understandable. Given, I'm. You no, know I no. That I. This. This. I. I'm gonna need you to have some agency. Have a smidge of agency. Oh, but she's the damsel. Oh my god. I want you to tell me what you want. I just want to make you happy. She can't just want to make us happy. It makes sense to me. That's all I want for her, so of course she'd want the same for us. I want you to make me unhappy. Um... You need your own thing. You've just met me. You can't base your entire happiness around me. Okay, if that's what makes you happy. What the fuck? Is she broken? <laughs> What's going on? What's going on is she's lying to you. Only she isn't a good liar. Are you starting to trust me now? No, that's not what it is. She's not a whole person.
I just want to leave. We can figure out the re no. You know what? Um, if you want to leave, then let's leave. That sounds perfect. Oh, phew. She's back to normal. Normal? What are you talking about? Our angel has always been like this. Absolutely flawless. The princess takes your hand, the last hopes of the entire world slipping through your fingers as they intertwine with hers. We have each other. We don't need the world for our happy ending. I like to think that you do, actually. <laughs> Look, I have my doubts, but the choice has been made and this is happening. You don't have to mope about it. I will mope about it, because moping is the only recourse you love-blind fools have left me with. You and the princess walk up the stairs hand in hand. <laughs> Ugh, look at the way she's smiling at you. She doesn't have to be so happy about this. And what happens after we walk up the stairs? Let's see. Oh, isn't that interesting? The door slams in your face and the lock clicks. That's a familiar move. Did I do that last time? Then you should know that you won't be able to leave. Oh no! Did someone lock us in here? That's not fair! We're supposed to leave now. She's right. It isn't fair. But the unfairnesses of the world are no match for the strength of true love. Enough with this true love nonsense. You just met her! <laughs> of course you wouldn't understand. Our passions run deeper than anything you have ever known. Are you listening to this? You don't have to go along with the every whim of that delusional voice. I'm just along for the ride at this point. I think we can open it if we try together. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Like a pair of teenagers in love, you and the princess place your hands on the door together. Blech. And the lock clicks and the door creaks open. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I told you our love was insurmountable. You and the princess make our your way upstairs. Our belief seems to have a big impact on what we right, are and are not able to do. do. The right thing. Take the blade from the table and slay her before it's too late. You're enjoying this, aren't you? You're taking every opportunity you can to draw out the end of the world and make me suffer. I hate you. That's the way out. We're going to leave together, just like you wanted. Yes, I suppose you are going to do that, aren't you? <laughs> you cross the room, opening the door to the cabin. And then you step outside. Our happy ending at last. We did it! What should we do now? Well, the world's over. So Where did everything that. go? Where did he go? Oh, is he gone? I hadn't noticed. I was too busy staring deep into our beloved's eyes. Alright, man. I'm cold. Is being happy supposed to be so cold? She's cold. Quick, our feathers. Pluck them all and weave her a coat worthy of a princess. Oh my god. But you don't get the chance to make that jacket, nor will you ever. It's time for you to leave. Memory returns. She's gone. W where did she go? Should we try and find her? And is that a mirror? Why is it here? Why now? It's going to be okay, just trust me. You've been here before and you always get scared. But it feels so bad. Like looking into it right now is going to be the end of everything. Yes. I fear that we won't like what we'll see. What if we just sit here and preen for a while? That can't hurt, right? I'll see you on the other side. It's going to be okay. Okay. If you say so. We'll trust you. She'll be there waiting for us. I just know it.
you approach the mirror. Silence as you reach forward. They're gone once again. The mirror always makes them leave, but you need to see what's in it. You are nothing at all. That is right. You can't be nothing. You refocus your gaze, and then you see it. A figure, faint and veiled in shadow just beyond the reflection. Are you me? I think you know what I am. A crack slides down the center of the mirror, splitting the image and the, the glass in two. And then another crack forms, and another, and another, turning the mirror into jagged shards of broken glass. What are you? Are you something like me? Oh, I'm nothing like you. I'm an echo. Likely one of many. Somebody made you, after all, and I'm what's left of him. Not that I'm the only one who can make that claim. I'm sure you've met many others like me. Others like you. You've said something like that before. Has every narrator really been different? Of course. That is by both necessity and design. This construct you're in exists in many places at once. Any time you failed, any time you thought yourself dead, it would restart and shunt both your consciousness and hers into another world. But you'll be awake soon, and then it won't be able to work like that anymore. Part of me, or are you something else? No. You're, you're the one who wanted me to slay the princess, why? Because among other things, she is death itself. To rid the world of suffering, to save untold trillions from being lost forever to the cosmic wind, she must be destroyed. Hmm. And despite how far you've fallen, you will still have a chance to fulfill your purpose once I'm gone. questions I can ask. If you made me, then what am I? You're the long quiet, the god I made to rid the world of death. You said she contains death. What is she? She is the shifting mound, the ebb and flow, the capacity to change. She is transformation, or most of it. Her nature is why I had to die, for she becomes that which others perceive her to be. But an echo oh. can't perceive things, not in the way that people can. Okay. So I was right that she's not the bad guy, he's- I've been suspecting that he's the bad guy all along, but I don't think he means to- well, he doesn't mean to be evil, he's got his own idea of the way to make things go right. If you want me to destroy the concept of transformation, how is that existence any better than death, or even different from death at all? Honestly, it feels worse. When I broke the cycle, I made sure that the tear was rough. You carry a part of what should be her, and she carries a part of what should be you. Things won't be as they are now, but they won't be nothing, either. Besides, anything is better than oblivion. In the end, nobody wants to leave. Why would you want to rid the world of death? If you need to ask that question, there's nothing I can say to move you. You haven't died. 
you cannot die. So you cannot grasp the abject horror of dying. Do you have anything to say for yourself, for all of this hubris? I do. The people out there are real. No matter what you do to them, no matter what you enable, I want you to remember that. What would it be like to live in a world without her? Light. Burdenless. An eternal pattern of forgetfulness leading into the joys of rediscovery. Everyone will be with the ones they love. No more fear. No more howling chaos. Just life. Forever. There's a cruel irony to it all. The only way I could share my dream with the world was to never be able to see it for myself. Why did you make her a princess? I didn't make her a princess, but I wove the idea of her into something your scattered mind could fathom. You chose for that something to be a princess. I think you're out of time. So I am. It's like I said, I'm just an echo. And echoes always fade away. You know what you have to do. As the final fragment of glass shatters, you see yourself with newfound clarity. The narrator was right. Was right. You are the long quiet, a vast and nascent god. And it is finally time for you to wake up. All of this is you. When you arrive at the heart of things, there is no final vessel for you to bear witness to. There is nothing for you to find. Hear our conversation. Every word you spoke found its way to me. I know him, and I know his construct. He was deluded by his fear of death. Pay him no mind. I'm the long quiet, but I don't really know what that means. Names are their attempts to capture that which cannot be captured. They call me the Shifting Mound. A pale imitation of what I actually am. Ever the passive player, always reacting and never acting. But it's woven into your nature, isn't it? When the Echo spun us from one into two, he gave you a choice and me a role to play. I am not death, but I contain it in my multitude. So, will you attempt to destroy me and bring about a world devoid of death and the possibility of meaning? Or, will you open the final doors to our liberation? There's so many stories we've left unfinished. Can we really just leave? Even as your eyes begin to open, you still hold on to the notions of is and is not, of beginning and end, pitch black islands in the blinding light of the infinite. There is nothing to resolve, nothing restraining us but us.
if you were always going to become this, then what was the point of me doing anything? Did it even matter what roads I walked if all of them would have led to this moment? If you're saying that, it's because you don't yet understand. But we cannot use words alone to grasp at things that words cannot express. And you cannot rationalize with logic that which defies it. Violence and passion are dances that both of us know well. If this is what it takes to enlighten you, then so be it. Your lover tries to shake into your body. And another, and another, and another. Do I miss your heart because I can't stand to see it go? But the stakes meant nothing to you. You had a desire, and you set that desire free. You lifting me, and me lifting you. Forever and ever and ever. Consumed by true belief, there was nothing that could hold us back. feeling never left me. Then there's no need for you to fight with me. Whenever you're ready, we can live together. Hand in loving hand. There are a few things more terrifying than one's own heart. And there is almost nothing more terrifying than sharing it with another. Well, that's why she shuts down all my organs, because she is death. That's really obvious. But the most terrifying thing of all is to leave one's heart unshared. You are the only thing like me, and I am the only thing like you. Could you bear the weight of an eternity alone? Do you dare to shape a reality of solitude and thrust it on creation? Thank you for sharing yourself with me. I am aware of what is good to you. The understanding you return to me is a gift. My mass is small problems. There is no there beginning is no to them. There is no end. And there is no there is only the flood of bodies. There is only the flood of bodies. In every moment you hold every possible sensation at once. Every moment you hold every possible sensation at once. And then you hold them all again. And, and, then, you all again. and then you hold them all again. But in the end, in you the reflected, end, it, back reflected it back at me. For a brief, For a brief moment, moment, both, both of us were everything. everything. We can, we be, can everything be everything again. again. We can be a beautiful and endless song. Oh, nice. The voices come back together for that last sentence. To contain everything is to contain every evil alongside every good. Can we not shed the confines of our old self, shed the, the confines of our old selves and create? Without the contrast of pain, pleasure is muted, made dull by the assurance that it will always be. A song that is only sweet is a pale horizon that never falls. You are weightless, suspended in the gravity of an idea that threatens to consume you, and you are alone. A tiny island caught between the death of the old world and the birth of the new. But alone is not helpless. When you were confronted with my vessel's apotheosis, you chose against all odds to defy me, and to hold on to your inner self with all its flaws. Even in the scorching light of my divinity. Without me, there are no externalities to resist. And it is struggle that carves meaning into consciousness.
I still defy you now. But in your defiance, I have already won. There is no power without resistance. Our actions feed each other into something greater. The question everything is to deny the truth in front of you. By believing in your suffering, you make your suffering real. By believing in your limitations, you place a shackle on your neck. Bound for eternity, you saw the need for impermanence. And it was through that need that you carved our freedom. Without impermanence, the suffering of living things is infinite. Would you strip my gifts away? and leave everyone to suffer in the dark. That would be torture. It would. Our purpose is to be and to experience, and their purpose is the same. To be permanent is to cease. To be paused is to be trapped. As the class between you abates, you begin to shape your will will rapidly dissolve. Nothing is immutable. Everything that is exists only in relation to everything it isn't. There is no constant. There is no center. Open your eyes and accept what we are. We can leave this prison together. you can to make me understand your perspective, but you keep dismissing mine. If you think you can change me, then I must be able to change you. What I offer you is not perspective. It is true. Whatever you're trying to do right now, you don't have to do it alone. Which hero are you? Wait. What is worth allowed here? Um, all of them? I assume in the same way that you're all of you. You have no idea how good it is to hear you. It's good to be here. She's too many things all at once out here. If you want to get through to her, you need some way to get through all of that divine confidence. There's still a piece of me nestled close to where it all began. I can take you there. I can take you to her heart. It's time to resume our dance. She's relentless, isn't she? Let's make this quick. Are you ready? I'm ready. Then let's go. And here we are. I'd say we were back where it all started, but I guess it's a little after that, isn't it? Do you need me to describe things? Is it just you and me? Did anyone else make it to the cabin? It's just us. I think the rest of them are still out there, jumbled up in the rest of her. No blade it is. I'm not sure what we'll be able to do without it, but your judgement has gotten us this far. The stairs. Do you remember the first time we were here? The first time we heard her voice? Have you figured out what you want to do yet, or are you going to keep trying to find a centre that doesn't exist? It sounded just like that. A little sharp, a little menacing. Only she didn't know us. And down we go. We shouldn't keep her waiting. And there you are. Hands <laughs> no empty. Shackle. So you don't feel like recreating our first meeting detail for detail. I wonder what else will be different. Maybe there's still room for us to chat before the final curtain call. What do you say?
So now that we're here at the end of everything, can you finally tell me your name? <laughs> I never had one. And do not call me the Shifting Mound. It's too much. But I've always been a princess to you, right? So why don't we stick with that? And as for you, well, Hero works for me. But that's me. You know, I think I like that. I'm sorry for all of the times I've hurt you. <laughs> the first time we met, I cut your throat open. If anyone should be apologizing for anything, it should be me. You're only trying to help. You know, when she puts it like that... It's so good to finally see you again. Right back at you. In a way, it hasn't been much time at all, but it feels like it's been forever since I've seen you. Thanks for coming back. Are you the same as you are out there? I don't know. I'm a part of her, I think. But she's seen so much more than we have. Like she's seen everything, right? I don't think I could hold all of that without losing myself. I don't think you could either. I don't think I want to be a god. Does it matter what we call ourselves? It's just another label, and I don't think labels have ever helped us. All they do is cram us into boxes where we don't fit. Just like this cabin. Which princess are you? You look like you did the first time we met. Is this the real you? I'm the same princess that's been with you since the beginning. And I feel real. But I also feel like I'm a lot more than I was then. We've been through a lot together. I don't think there's anything more real than that. None of this was ever really fair for either of us, was it? No, it really wasn't. But just because it hasn't been fair doesn't mean that it hasn't been worth it. I'm... really glad I got to know you. What do you think of her? What she wanted us to be? I don't think she's the sort of thing you can really disagree with. It doesn't matter if she's right or wrong because she exists. She's this big, unrelenting force and there's no arguing with her. But I guess that was the question out there, wasn't it? And it was the question before you came down here, too. Should she get to exist? I'm glad you didn't bring that knife with you. And like I said earlier, I don't really want to be her. I think I just want to be me. Yeah, I'm happy not to be everything. Just being us is plenty. What if we just leave? Do you know where this cabin is? Because I don't. I don't even know what's supposed to be outside other than us. What would even happen if we leave? What would that even mean? Not knowing what it means is why I want it. We knew everything out there, but we don't know this. I want to know this. I guess when you put it that way, I want that too. I think I'm gonna stay right here. Whatever you're doing right now, wherever you're going, it feels like it's for just the two of you. Are you sure you don't want to come? Yeah, it wouldn't feel right, but I'll be okay. I don't think I'll be alone for long, either. I'm sure I can find the others. You lead, and the princess follows. And together, you leave the basement behind for the last time. It's quiet as you ascend, a comfortable silence filling a space that used to be flooded with violence and words and noisy thoughts. But there is an energy in the silence. Electricity, the anticipation of the unknown. At the 
top of the stairs, the princess stalls, eyes fixed on the cabin door. You can see a tension seize her. She is unsure of herself for the first time in her long and short existence. She has no part to play anymore, and she knows this, yet she still is. And then she crosses the room to the door outside. You follow her confident steps. This is it. I have no idea what it's going to be like out there. Not that I'm scared or anything. It's exciting, really. Anything could happen. And if it's bad, then... It won't be bad. Not with you. Who's going to open it? Both of us. Together. Very interesting. This was really fascinating. I have thoughts, but they're not fully formed, so I can't really express them very well. Um, but I do appreciate the different ways that the princess personifies death, because death has been personified in a lot of different ways. And the princess embodies a lot of those. And I haven't, like, I haven't seen every princess. Um, I would be interested to play this game some more, just to find different routes that I didn't get to try. Um, so you might be seeing more videos of this. Um, I might actually go achievement hunting route. I might like actually go achievement hunting for this one. But um, yeah, I do think I would actually like to go achievement. Hunting. And I don't often do achievement hunting, but for this one, I, I just might. Um, wow, I've been playing this for an hour. This is going to be a nightmare to edit. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have thoughts, please leave them in the comments below. I'd be interested to hear what you guys think of the ending I got um, and the route I took to get there. Um, if you'd like to see more of this, let me know. Um, I will probably be playing more. And in the meantime, y'all know how the bell icon works, y'all know what likes are for, and I will see you very soon. Bye bye!